camera, but I'm going to look in this direction, so don't be confused by it. Anyway, we're back, and this is a very special day, mostly for me, but like for everyone else. <laughs> you know, I, if, if I start fainting or something, that's understandable. Uh, we have not one, but two guests today, and, uh, you know, it's my bestie, Yuri Lobenthal. That's where we start. And then we continue with the person who I really, really love, and he's going to find out soon, <laughs> David Blue. <laughs> <laughs> where is he? Where is he? Where is he? That guy. Yeah. Yep. That guy. I don't know. Is is he is he there on your screen? Oh, no, he, too? He's, he's like he's like that way. He's there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> Zoom. He's everywhere. Katie, do you want to introduce our lovely podcast? Hi everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That's Lily. We have Yuri. And we have David. And that's me done. <laughs> Woo! Oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Uh, so this is gonna be like a very uh you know, just talking about movies and TV. That's my favorite thing to do. You know that. That's why I keep coming back. I mean, well, you guys are obviously awesome, but... <laughs> we <yeah>. understand. <laughs> it's understandable. But before we get into that, you know, I, I have to say this because it's like, if I'm not going to say chest. this now, I'm, I'm going to die. <laughs> to like just, which I do often. But anyway, uh, so back in 2020, yes, 2020, uh, I was in the emergency room because I also do that a lot, unfortunately. And uh, a little message popped on uh, from my friend uh, Jen, who's I'm going to put somewhere here. And Jen sent me a cameo from David Blue. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yep. Tell me that. Yep. Oh. And I was literally sitting in the emergency room, feeling like that I'm going to die, and this is the end, and whatever, getting ready for my funeral. And then that message popped up, I'm out, and I'm not joking, I instantly felt better, and then I listened to the message, and you were just the sweetest, obviously, didn't know who I was or what I was doing. Aww. What up, Lily? Hey, David Blue here. Your friend Jen reached out to me and said that you could probably use a little bit of cheering up and for some reason thought that my face would help do that. And I hope that my quarantine face, which is essentially just very furry and unkempt, does not in fact make things worse for you. I hope that I do something along the way of cheering you up and putting a smile on your face. Um, very much appreciate your support and followship. Followship? It sounds like we're about to throw a ring into a volcano. Uh, but I appreciate you following me on the socials and caring about stupid things I have to say or my career or whatever. Um, know that I appreciate you. But also, I don't know what it is that you're going through other than, oh, I don't know, the world being weird like it is. But I hope that whatever it is you're dealing with, you know that you are not alone. Uh, whether it be friends like Jen or others or myself, uh, you're not. None of us are. It's really hard to remember that during this time. But... Uh, whether it be on my Twitch channel or socials or whatever, I try my best to remind people that and also to thank people like you. David Blue, you saved her life. Yeah. I'm not just a doctor. I play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. Aww. Sorry, Acting you know, saves lives. Well, I'll, you know what's... Sorry, I'm not, I don't mean to hijack this at all, but you know what's funny is it, I, I, I'm sure Yuri feels the same way too because we're both, you didn't realize this, huge nerds. Um, and before we really even got into this, we're already huge fans of TV and movies and stuff. And I think about this a lot. Like when I was younger and I loved Quantum Leap or Star Trek The Next Generation, because I'm old, I remember like if I that wanted to get me. Jonathan Frakes autograph, I'd have to like find out how to get an LA phone book, have it shipped to the East Coast, find a mailing address, send a letter, hope somebody opens it, maybe get a headshot in return. And then you cut to nowadays where you can just like tweet at Yuri Lowenthal and he's like pooping and he's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is most of the time. You can get like messages. It's kind of cool. It's like the accessibility is terrifying, but also really yeah. cool because those of us who grew up knowing that TV shows and movies affect you and change you and stuff. It's kind of cool sometimes at conventions and stuff to be on mm -hmm. the other side of it and be able to. Yeah talk to people who it's currently affecting. So thank you. That's I, I have I have written, I remember writing fan letters, like letters, oh, yeah. handwritten letters yep. to people who I, you know, loved in the industry. Uh, I don't think I ever received a response. Uh, but then when I did find a copy of the letter I wrote, wrote to Winona Ryder, and I wouldn't have responded to that one either. 
in retrospect, it was, I mean, it was just were kind of pictures. No, there were no pictures, but, but I mean, it, you know, looking back at it, I'm like, oh yeah, no, that sounds pretty creepy when you, when you read it like that. Um, but, uh, but I wrote, I wrote Did a letter for the stare. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> no, I, no, I, no, it was, it was I, probably something about, I had a dream about you the other night and uh, it just felt really real. And, um, you know, I, I, I just really, you know, love your work and, you know, I, you know, I don't know. It was in, 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 in you know, at the time, we you know when you're in college or whatever, um, it sounded perfectly <laughs> reasonable. <laughs> Less weird. Uh, but um, but I also I wrote a letter to, to Fred Astaire even way before that. Oh. And uh, when, he, when he was still alive, obviously. Yeah. And, um, I and, I, so. and I, I never right? left it on his that, grave. Because that's, cause that's yes. even that's even creepier than the one on a writer letter is writing letters somebody after they're dead. <laughs> on a Ouija um, board. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember ever right. getting a response from anyone, you know, but but I had to like look up. I had to research, you know, where you send fan, like who their agent is or where yeah. they get, where they get, you know, fan mail care of whatever P.O. box. Hmm. Yeah. You know, I, now you just, I, you I just hate to admit, I'm to move you guys because I just realized making you full screen is I'm like looking down here to find one. <laughs> um, what's interesting is I never had the, the, I was going to say cojones, but that's so sexist. I never had the, the belief that anybody would write me back. It, it never crossed my mind to actually write a letter to anyone. The closest I ever came was I went to one Star Trek convention when I was younger. My dad brought me, God bless him, because he wasn't into Star Trek. And um, and I waited in line for some autographs and I entered a raffle to try to win a really cool, and I want to know who has this, Next Generation Trans Am, where in the, oh. instead of a gear shift that had like a warp core that was like, woo, woo, God, oh, woo, oh my God. Oh my God. I was like, yeah, I need $20. And I didn't win it. Um, but I, I stood in line to get Max Grodencheck, who played Rom's autograph on Deep Space Nine. And he wrote, and I still have this autograph. He wrote, you know, if you if the act because I was been an actress since I was a kid. He said, uh, if the acting thing doesn't work out, you can always get a job in Rom's bar. And I <laughs> like that meant the world to me when I first moved to L.A. And I yes. just was like, you know, like, hey, this is so cool. And it crosses those those lines I never would have expected. I would have lost my mind. I think actually I probably would be in jail if I knew how to write any actor. <laughs> Scott Bakula, please be my friend. <laughs> yeah, this podcast is just a secret way for us to get in touch with people that you we want to hang out with. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if Yuri feels the same way, but I, I'll straight up admit this. One of my favorite things about doing conventions as mm -hmm. a guest is being backstage and meeting all the people I want to meet. I have to imagine. Without yeah. like, oh, yeah. I, I remember in the bowels of Dragon Con, uh, the last time I went wandering and running into the cast of The Expanse and just dropping to my knees. <laughs> yeah. Definitely you know? would have been me. It's like we just get like, behind yeah. the scenes access yeah. to this. I am curious what Yuri wrote to Fred Astaire, though. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I don't I don't remember exactly, but I was just, and, you know, I'm still a, a big fan. And, you know, I, I just watched his movies when I was growing up. You know, I I, I got to a place where I, I met, you know, I, I had a friend who was into like big band music and, you know, watching for a stereo movies and we were living overseas at the time. So, so we had limited access to what we could watch and he had a bunch of that stuff on Betamax um, or VHS. Like, I don't even remember at this point. I mean, that's, you know, uh, a, a, a step Laser further. <laughs> right. Um, but, um, but I just remember like, I mean, his movies brought me so much joy and I loved watching him and I, and I, I don't remember what I wrote him, um, but, but you know, I wrote him. It was it was it was a few years before before he died. Well, um, it, but I will tell you. Know, yeah, go ahead. Right. No, you first. Okay, okay. Well, the magic do, of no, be remember, remember what it is. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the rest <laughs> of this podcast. Just gonna be you and me doing that. <laughs> no, no, you, guys, no, no, no. All, you want me to? Oh, no, okay. Um, uh, a, a couple things. One, yeah, I I went to Star Trek and Doctor Who conventions and you know like gaming conventions when when I was in high school. That was where I learned about that world, um, and it was ama it was amazing to meet those people. And I remember how much those interactions meant to me too. When you could tell they were really connecting, whether you could tell where they were checked out, you know that they that they didn't care. Um, that has definitely affected how I interact with people at conventions. I'm like, I remember what this this short moment meant to me. It's why I'm so exhausted at the at the end of you know a show like that. Um, but but I you know much like the what you just said, um, I 
was living in New York and I was really into uh, Chow Yun Fat uh, and uh, Hong Kong action films. And he actually came to town for a retrospective of, of his films and then was signing autographs afterwards. And I was, I was, you know, I'd moved to New York. I was, you know, trying to, you know, be a professional actor. And I, I, I would go to a lot of, I mean, I still do here, you know, I just love movies so much. And this is a movie town. There are lots of retrospectives and cool theaters. And, but I went to this thing and I waited in line afterwards and uh, I had a plan and they, they cut, they cut the line right <laughs> after me. Oh. No, right after oh. me. Oh, okay. So I was the last person to get up. And I said, um, I, rem I remember this. I said, uh, Mr. Chow, I, uh, I, your, your hand must be very tired from signing autographs. I'm going to uh, give you a break. Uh, and instead, here's my headshot. And, I, and, and it, you know, on, on one level, it's super cringe. Like it's, you know, it's, it's uh, like, I'm sure David just went, I think it said David just was like, oh. Um, but, and I had my, I had my, my headshot um, and I had signed it um, to him. And he and he was momentarily confused, and he and he and he looked down, and then he looked up at me, and there was there was like a you know like 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 the hint of a smile, and 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 he put the headshot down, and he and he took my he took my hand in like he reached out his hand you know shake hands, and he took my hand in both his hands, and he said, I hope we get a chance to work together someday, or I look forward to working with you someday, and even if he didn't mean it. There were cold, dark nights, you know, in my my journey when I would remember that moment and I would be like, but, you know, in the future, I'll be able someday maybe I could. And then I'll remind him of that time that he said that thing. And I've never met him since then, even though I did try to sneak on a set of replacement killers once, but <laughs> which was shooting in New York. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, uh, but but those those interactions mean something mm -hmm. oh yeah depending on what you're looking for you know if i may two quick anecdotes to bounce off of that this is the problem with you and i will just tell stories all day no no please go ahead please do it please go ahead but even at his like last birthday i was like quick question three hours later um so uh two things one i was sick on and off throughout middle school and so i i was in and out of the hospital for two years and uh, there were a lot of shows. I've always loved TV shows and movies. And uh, Quantum Leap was on when I was in the hospital. And I loved it. And I remember my mom, I think, taped the finale for me, for me to watch in the hospital when I wasn't doing well. So I very much understand TV shows and movies helping you through difficult things or happy things or inspiring you. And I think that's why it matters to me when you meet somebody at a con. You don't know if they're on their good day or a bad day or something's going on. Anytime I meet a fan, they're like, you know, your show got me through. I'm alive because of the show. Or I do this thing for a living because of a character that you played or something. Or my kid, Eli. You're like, Bleh. it's wild, you know? And it means so much to me because we've been on the other side of it. And we have seen how we felt how much it can matter. And I'm the same as Yuri. I'm exhausted after a con because I believe... I, I hate to always quote her because it, she said it. It wasn't me, but I love this. I, Amanda Tapping. Um, you know, we became friendly before we had ever aired. And I was a huge fan before Eric got cast. And I remember the first time I got invited to do a convention. And I, I felt weird about it because I had only gone to one ever. And I was like, I don't know if I want to go and take money from fans. You know what I mean? I was like, Bleh. it feels gross and dirty and. And I was, I made it, I was like, oh, why am I so important? And Amanda said the best thing, and forgive me, Amanda, for quoting you, but I love it. She said, honey, we are the band on the cruise ship. Like, it's not about us. Everyone's there to have fun with each other and see that we're just the band. And that, it really changed my perspective. And I've told this to so many people who weren't sure if they should do conventions. I was like, we are there as entertainment. We are there to shake hands and give people cool stories and give of ourselves and that's why Yuri and I are friends and that's why there are other people who I've lost respect for who are just like not even looking up and just signing autographs or they're mean to their assistants or something like that yeah like this is coming from theater you do a play and then you go out to the green room after and you meet a bunch of people and they're like I love the show whatever you don't get that in tv film 
going to a con is like a delayed that you get yes. to meet the audience who tell you what it meant to them and it's really cool and i do not take it for granted let alone the travel is fun but i do not take it for granted and i think it's a responsibility uh and a benefit for those of us who do it um yeah, and then the other side, go ahead no no go the other anecdote was meeting somebody and i'm trying to remember what mine was because i had something similar like an on a dark night, I just, a dark night. I just remembered um, there was somebody who said something similar to me that I like kind of held on to. But I mean, I, I've met some people. I did a movie in uh, Nebraska, and there was like a little kid that I not even about somewhere else. A little kid that I met who gave me his headshot, um, and then like a few years later, his mom was like, "Hey, just so you know, he's actually got an agent, and he's starting wow. to do stuff." And it's it's cool, you know. It makes me feel yeah. old as hell. <laughs> but it's cool sure yeah um, yeah nothing nothing makes makes me feel older than when, when somebody comes up at, but but also you know proud at the same time that you voiced my childhood like i'm like okay right okay yeah thank you I, I see what you're saying i see what you're saying um and thank you and um and i'll just go climb into my coffin now you know what I, mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the, the, i wasn't at the giving of the headshot necessarily it it wasn't that i actually am impressed by the confidence to do that i was cringing because i had i have a sitcom life anything weird that can happen happens to me and it's funny to other people but it's really horrible in the moment for me and so growing up i i'm born in new york but i sort of went to college in florida and a family member i really wanted to do tv film but back then if you're on the east coast and in florida you, you there's no way to do tv film it wasn't even a possibility but i had a family member who used to like babysit for this one producer weirdly and they found out they were doing a movie in orlando where i went to college and i was and they're like you should call the producer and i'm i'm coming from theater i'm like this is a great idea i'm going <laughs> to call this producer and god bless him i called him um i was i i forgot what, how old i was i was not very old i called him and i was like hey i'm blah blah blah's relative and uh, i was told you're doing a movie and i happen to be an actor uh, and they're like okay okay uh how much military experience do you have and i'm like mm. <laughs> and they're like this is a movie about the army we need people with military experience. And I'm like, oh, I'm like 18. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, I can't help you. I'm like, that makes sense. Like, you know? <laughs> but you did it. Yeah, I, did. I was going to say you did that. Oh, well, inspiring. If anything, it was like, shh, stay in the back. <laughs> you always get a golfer in. You, you've got to. And I, I, I used to do that more when I was younger. I will be honest. The time that I, that I snuck into the Independent Spirit Awards party, um after the independent spirit awards like i look back at that guy and i was like who is that guy he's so cool and now i'm like i would never like i'm so yeah but i, I don't have know a question for you. forgive me i know I'm, I'm forgive me i'm gonna hijack for a moment i have a yeah. question because i've been thinking about this a lot lately uh, as a teacher same when i first moved to la my friends and i when we were waiting tables we were we were like save up our money all year and go to the sundance film festival where we had no movies we didn't have agents really and we'd sneak into parties and we would crash premieres and we made so many friends and contacts that like years later, you know, are, are people in the industry. Nowadays, I would be mortified to do that. I would not, I can't do that. But I almost wonder sometimes if we need to recapture that feeling in this industry of that fearlessness of like, I belong, what are you talking about? Because I think there's something to it that we lose as we get older and as we get more experienced. You know what I mean? Like, I, there's something to the fake it to you make it of it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, I'm, I'm always waiting for the moment that um, Robert Downey Jr. had in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, where he just accidentally goes into an audition. And, <laughs> just, and, just, and gets it and I'm like... And yeah. that's so, I mean, that movie 100%. is from start to finish, that movie just is brilliant. Perfection. And you, I yeah. mean, yeah, we could talk about the rest movie. of the time. We could just talk about how good that movie is. Exactly. And the commentary, um, but, yeah. the commentary yeah. of that movie is fantastic. Oh, it is so yeah. good. Yeah. So good. But like, I'm, I'm always like, you know, when, when I do these extra jobs, I'm always walking around and I'm like, just checking out. The, the doors like you know is, is anyone in the meeting room should i go in <laughs> i never right. do by the way but, is, 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 
Like, uh, I was always be a creep around movie sets in the case they're like, you, the creeping guy, for my <laughs> the role of the creeping guy. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> See, this is all baffling to me. And I don't know if it's just because I'm English, but like the concept. You're too polite like, to do anything like too, that. I could not even imagine being like, if I was somewhere where I shouldn't be, I'd be standing there like, somebody's going to notice and I'm going to get kicked. I, my, so my dad works um, at Pinewood. Uh, actually, oh, wow. um, uh, he he works as like head of production technology. It, you know, very cool. Got it. Got the job a couple of years ago, um, and I went with him to work recently. And they gave me a little badge and everything because they were look we were looking at maybe potentially me getting a job there. It kind of fell through. It's all a bit all over the place. Industry stuff. Um, <laughs> um, but I was we were just like he and he was with me the entire time. He you know, works there most days of the week. Um, but I was walking around and I was like, somebody is going to see me and they are going to tell me, they're going to go, why are you here? We don't know you. Get out of here. <laughs> and I'm just saying, they're like, no, nobody realized that I don't meant to be here. You just, you just have to blend thing. in. That's right. the thing. I forget if it was Lucille Ball or Judy Dench, but somebody who said, somebody huge said they're always waiting well into their fame. They're like, they're always waiting for somebody to hire them and go, oh, what are you doing here? We thought you were better than this. Mm. What I found is, a large, I would say the majority of the really cool, talented, famous people that I've ever met have the similar sort of like, I feel like I don't belong here, imposter mm -hmm. syndrome. Yeah. You know, and it's only the douchebags who are like, yeah, you're welcome. I belong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I have the number of times I've gotten a pass to a studio because I'm shooting there and then I spend as much time after wandering around looking at stuff because you just want to see other things. Yeah. You know? fan over other stuff it's it's just part of it's just part of the industry i think mm -hmm. i think honestly the worst people are the ones who like lose the sense of magic oh yeah their, I, you know, yeah i found you. that a lot when i started um when i got my first job in tv and it wasn't particularly glamorous i was a production runner on this like unscripted show it was about like the demolition of t of like buildings and stuff like that they went they went and found like builders and whatnot and they, they sort of like shot things getting exploded um <laughs> and i just sat at a desk all day and I for everything yeah, yeah it's <laughs> very sort of like british tv midday like daytime tv stuff um and i was sat there for a lot of it going wow i'm making a tv show and everybody else is just there <laughs> they're like yeah, it was just a thing we do yeah. all day <laughs> yeah know? Right. And it's like, but every yeah. once in a while, I'd be like, I'm making a TV show. I'm literally sitting there Googling people all day. That was my job. <laughs> just to make sure, what? like, we can't just have a criminals professional on stalker. TV. Like, you know. <laughs> I have done so much really? professional stalking. It there is you unbelievable. Go. There you go. That's, really, it. that's a job. Bad. You know, like, when you get hired on something that's been around for, like, 20 years, and some people are just happy to be there, and other people are just clocking in. You know, mm -hmm. there's this mm -hmm. sort of, I, I don't know, to me... I love the magic of it. Side note, are you wearing an old Gods of Asgard? I am wearing an old Gods of Asgard t-shirt. I got this today. I'm so happy with it. I, I, I need to get my hand on the soundtrack for Alan Wake 2. It's having just so it, it, good. Uh, I mean, you played the games, Alan Wake and Alan Wake 2, Yuri? I, I have not yet. Um, I, I, I've been wanting to, to start because it is. It, um, Alan Wake is totally my kind of game. Um, but I was at the VGAs when they had those super weird old gods of Asgard live performances. I, okay, the, so the the, we were everything. completely, I'm going to sidetrack everything now because I have to talk about this. I was up until like three in the morning watching this because I was like, old gods of Asgard are playing. I have it. Everything in me wants to see Sam Lake up on that stage doing that dance. Didn't think it was going to happen. It, yeah, three in the morning, I'm losing my mind like on VC with my best friends. Like, this is the best thing audience that's ever happened. I, I never played Alan Wake 1. I started streaming during the pandemic on Twitch and I played Control and it became one of my favorite games I've played in years. <laughs> I'm replaying so, it at the moment for like the yeah. fourth time. But I skipped the first one and I wasn't really going to go back. And then mm. somebody was looking for scary games to play on stream and someone's like, you got to play the new Alan Wake. And I'm like, the first one wasn't scary i heard it's just weird and they're like the second one's supposed to be more scary it was a fun game i still like control even more but the music mm. the music videos of from old i mean i am now just an old scott old gods of asgard fan for life just yeah from i mean we would sit here on the interstitial menu music just rocking out before we'd <laughs> It to go to the next it's, level it's so good there's a the old gods of asgard are just released like a just like a it, they call it rebirth it's meant to be like their greatest hits but it's basically all the songs that they've done for all the sort of the remedy connected universe stuff um 
Alan Wake 2 gets so much better the moment you play, like, really get into, like, the nitty-gritty of, like, all of the, like, lore stuff. Because that's why I've gone back to Control, because I'm like, there's so much stuff in here that relates to Alan Wake 2, and then in New Game Plus of Alan Wake 2 that I'm like, I'm putting the dots together, I am forming so many theories. I think I, I mean, this isn't a spoiler really, but walking through the music video is all I'll say, yeah. is probably like, it, I think about it once a week. It's like, so I don't fun. know. It's just so, I, I'm, I'm like Yuri. I like a lot of games, but I don't know when it happened. Uh, trippy sort of alt weird what's yeah. happening games really stick with me. I, me it, it's, it's, Those are the only things I really play through these days. It's or TV shows, Dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. on netflix yeah. oh my god Dark's yeah the best yeah. thing ever it's i mean i i love anything because i've got a real fascination with just like the nature of story in general mm. um i find it like endlessly fascinating and i want to pull it apart constantly so anything that has it like it's a meta narrative basically where it's like this is about making stories i'm like great i'm in <laughs> let's do it yes so, and yeah. it's just like uh, piles stanley like parable. meta on meta it's so good <laughs> played stanley the, the, parable yes <laughs> i have played no. stanley parable <laughs> I have not. Um, you know about it? No, I'm gonna have to add. Oh it. my god, you gotta play the Stanley Parable, dude! Look, don't look, don't don't look, don't, don't look anything up. Just mm. by the way, I looked up. By, by the way, I looked up TNG Trans Am, and I have not been able to find a single photo online so far. You know what's um, funny? I was thinking about this recently. Uh, collecting, you know, growing up, collecting, uh, collecting Magic cards, uh, Marvel Ultimate or Marvel Series One cards. You know, everything had more worth to it because you couldn't find anything. Now, because of the internet, I think there's no value in collecting anymore because you can just find something on eBay. I've stopped looking up the stuff that mattered to me as a kid because, like, you're either hoping that the one person is still on the internet. Like, I I ran a BBS uh, when I was younger. Nerd! Yeah, I'm a huge nerd. Uh, so every once in a while, I, like, look up people I used to know in my BBS days to see if I can find them, and they've, like, disappeared to the annals of time, you know? Like, they just aren't on the net. I think it's the same thing with some of these collectibles, like the P and D Trans Am, or it might have been a Camaro. I don't Camaro. Camaro. Yeah. Camaro. 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 Might have been um, a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, to 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 go back, uh, um, uh, the new season of True Detective is checking a lot of boxes for me. Oh, I really got to check that out. Anybody's been watching. I I have um I watched the first season of True Detective and then didn't end up watching any of the other ones. Which is yeah. annoying because I watched the first season of True Detective when well, I was in my well, Calum Farrell they binge. They don't connect, right? Sure. Well, they don't connect, and and that first season is better than yeah. all of them. Yeah. So. yeah. The first season's great. Second season, whatever. I'm enjoying. Let's see. This is where our friends. I'm enjoying this season, but I do not understand. There's so many people online trashing it right now. Um, I've, I've decided not to to look online uh, for, for people trashing it. Just yeah. No. I avoid good. social. Well, this is. Yeah. A deeper thing. I avoid social media these days. Um, I decide. Yeah. You really should. I'm yeah. On it. Um, but that being said, it's the craziest thing. Over the past couple of days, when I've looked, the first thing that pops up is people talking trash about the new True Detective. And the funny thing is, I think the reason I like this season so far is it's not season one murder mystery, whatever. It's weird alt reality. What's going on? Is that a polar bear? Like ah, it's it's right. weird. I'm hoping yeah. there isn't. A, a murderer i'm hoping it's a supernatural thing you know what i mean me too like, yeah me too um, that oh that cool. would be so cool let's be I'm fair. right there with you it's yeah. very I'm, I'm sorry no Lily, you go ahead <laughs> that, no I, i'm just gonna quickly uh pivot back uh to the beginning of the conversation uh for a second <laughs> because i have three things to say i got an answer once for a fan mail Ooh. and yeah. it was jensen eccles oh just wow. putting it out there Okay. I literally like I said that's this a flex. letter <laughs> and yeah. I was like you know I'm I'm I it, it was basically a love letter let's be honest here. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, yeah. he's very handsome okay so I'm like you know I and I was it. like 14 or something but uh he wrote back and the, it literally said thank you so much and I got a picture that was signed of him and it was Aww. it was a shirtless picture oh. 
Just see, he gets he it. He gets you. you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was. Anyway, uh, the second thing is my friend Colin, who's the best. He works at Comic Con. Uh, he's selling his costume controllers, and at one point he told me that uh, back in the day, meaning back in 2018, he got uh, access to green rooms. <laughs> to... I don't like that. And, I, don't, I don't like that at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stop that. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, and um, get, you know, it's already a very sad story for me because one of the main guests was Sigourney Weaver. Oh. And I call him Matt Sigourney Weaver in the fucking elevator and they had a chat. And I was like, what? I couldn't even go to that comic con and you met her like in the elevator. And he was like, yeah, she was pretty cool. <laughs> but that's She's the good... fucking best. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good, you know, end to that story. There have been times when I could have met somebody and I took a second and I asked myself two questions. Do they look like they want to talk to anybody right now? Hmm. And if, how much do you like this person? If this doesn't go well, this is, is it going to break it. your heart? And and you have to trade that off versus getting to interact with them and possibly ruining like your, like one time, uh, I was I was backstage at a Tenacious D concert because my friend used to manage them really early on. And I was backstage and John Cusack was just sitting by himself brooding, which is what he does, I guess. You know, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But, it's but and I was like <laughs> and I was like, I could go over there and tell him that Gross Point Blank is, you know, like my one of my favorite movies of all it's a perfect movie and how I've just or you know, and I looked at his face again and I went, Oh, I still want to be able to watch like, I love that movie too much for him to be having an off day or whatever and just, you know, be grumpy, which we all have. Like, I mean, you can't hold that against someone. You can't expect someone to always be nice when somebody comes up to them when they're famous, like, you know, he is. Or, you Robert know, Picardo like said that to me once, and I always try to re repeat it to others, like, because I, I was talking about there's two or three people that I've met that I was a huge fan of. And I, I'm very aware, like, are, are they in a good mood? I don't want to bother them. I think I even start with, like, not to bother you, but. Uh, and like two or three people were jerks and it really ruined them for me. And I remember I was complaining about one of them to Robert Ricardo and he's like, careful. It's like everybody has a bad day, you know, like they might have just found out they're sick or they're going through a divorce or something. And he's right. You know, if you hear five stories or 10 stories from your friends about somebody, they're probably a jerk. Yeah. But if you if, it, if sure. you've had a bad interaction, you know, we've all been there. That being said, I, I would hope. Yuri and I, there's probably somebody out there who would say that about us, but I'm pretty sure most people would be like, Yuri would probably have the flu, uh, be, have just been shot, and somebody <laughs> kidnapped someone he loved, and he'd still be like, what do you need? You know? Yeah. But I That's mean, us. You, you, you never know. It is kind of tough, though, especially with conventions. Mm. You, know, you never know until you get into that orbit, and I'm the king of swallowing my own foot. I will say the <laughs> wrong thing at the wrong time. I was talking to Anthony Stewart Head in the UK, and at the time, I had never watched Doctor Who, and it was, and I couldn't sleep, and it was on. And I was like, I, I channel surfing, and I saw Doctor Who, and I was like, I can't even open up that can of worms. And Anthony Stewart Head was like, you've never seen it? I was like, I know, I know. It's like your export here. I know, I should watch it. <laughs> Tap on my shoulder, and they're like, you've never seen Doctor Who? And I was like, no, I get it. And they're like, I was one of the doctors. I was like, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you, you never know. You never know. Yeah. But I mean, I do think true. you do have to try, though. I mean, especially at conventions. Sure. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. so terrible. I, I find it so like even at conventions, I'm like, I, I'm like, sorry, you're like, this is I, I'm posing an imposition, even though I know it's like the entire setup is there for that. But I um, I, I went to see I saw David Tennant in Macbeth end of last oh. year. Oh, like, was... I, I mean it was incredible and i had yeah. it in my head i was like it, it was like a total it was it, truly the the gods like was shone on me that day because i got a random a friend of mine was like hey i found a ticket that's like available for today do you want me to get it in for you and then you can just pay me back i was like yes um yes yes please yeah yes please <laughs> um so i went off and i did that and I, in my head i was like i'll stay afterwards i'll do the stage because i never do stage door i am terrified always sure. um uh, and I was like, I'll do stage talk because I love David Tennant because Do Doctor Who's like one of those things from my, honestly, it's probably the thing that got me into doing, like into television, generally speaking, as a kid. Yeah. 
um uh and um uh I, I was i watched the play and it was incredible like you wear these little headphones it's like all done with this like binaural beats so they have these little microphones so you're you're listening to them really closely it was brilliant uh so you got like he's like whispering soliloquies and you can hear it really really closely and they're playing with like the audio scape in, in your ears and all that sort of stuff but he was so good in it i've got like so like i stood outside for like five minutes and then i was like no i'm too overwhelmed <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. like, I'm going home. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like I can't. I can't do this. <laughs> it's like it's, he I've, needs to kind of remain separate from me. <laughs> I I have taken to when I go to a convention. Um, I I usually forget to look at the guest list before I go, and then I'm sort of caught unawares. But every now and then I'll I'll look at the guest list, see who else is going to be there, and then I will tell my uh, because my convention rep knows that I'm a big nerd. And then at the beginning of the show, I'll say he he'll come up and he'll say, "Who's your one?" And because because I've started to say, look, if I could meet anyone here, but sort of by accident back in the green room, <laughs> um, uh, it would be this person or that person. And then and then he tries to sort of make it happen without it being weird. Mm. But but in Salt Lake, um, I, I realized like like too like I too late, not too late, but but I showed up and I'm like, oh, I should look to the guest list. Harvey Guillen, who plays uh, Guillermo on uh, what oh, we do in the yeah. shadows. And I mean, who's so delightful. I'm like. Harvey Gann's my one. <laughs> you know, like, he's like, oh, I know Harvey. Hold on. And I'm like, no, no, wait. He's, and he was, because he was in the green room. I'm like, no, I'm not ready. I don't know. And, and he brought me up and he's like, hey, this is my, this is my client, Yuri. He, and, you know, Harvey had probably just gotten there off a flight. And, and he was, he was polite and nice enough. But, but I could tell on his, because, because I started, because I wasn't prepared. Um, I just started to say things that were, and and in retrospect, I remember looking back and going, "Oh my God, it's it's a it's a, it's a wonder he's he shook your hand and said hi to you and thank you at all after that diarrhea, you know that verbal but, diarrhea." No, but, you know, yep. I well, first of all, I I hate you because I've never had any con booking agent be like, "Who do you want to meet?" They don't care. Remember the people I work with? They're like, "Go goodbye for four days." Um, but you never know. You know, this isn't in any way to do this. This is because it was one of the coolest experiences of my life and it taught me the lesson you never know. I remember season two, might've been after we were canceled, but of Stargate, we were at San Diego Comic-Con. My then girlfriend and I, we were wandering around the the nerd HQ party that Zach Levi used to throw was like the coolest party. (laughs) So much fun. And this was like one of their bigger years and there was like this cool like backstage party we were all at and we're just walking around having a good time with our friends i mean i might have been there with yuri i don't even know um and i remember the entire back party got quiet and the cast of game of thrones walked in because we were all like <gasps> like we were just everyone's like freaking out and they walk by us and we're all just kind of like you know like <laughs> and uh i remember that rob stark walked by and I said to my girlfriend, I was like, I really want to meet them. I really want to say hi. And I was like about to approach. And he turns and he's like, oh, my God, I'm a huge fan. Can I get a picture with you? And he's like, his, his girlfriend came over and was, I was like, huh? And like, we <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> and he walked off. And I looked at my girlfriend. I was like, I have a favor. I need you to go ask his girlfriend who he thinks I am. Because I have, I've had people ask me for my autograph because they wanted Jonah Hill's autograph or because they wanted Seth Rogen's autograph. And so I was like, I'm so terrified he's going to think that I'm Jason Biggs or something like that. <laughs> and she came back 10 minutes later and she's like, he's a huge Stargate fan. And I was like, shut up. Like, I'm I'm fanboying over Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is fanboying off of Stargate Universe. So my point yes. is, like, you never know. Like, Harvey could be like, yo, I love this. I love, right. you know, shelf right. life. You know, based based on that story, I, I, I always loved Richard Maiden, but now I I, I love him. Like yes. <laughs> yes, Richard, go off. You know the worst <laughs> part about Target this? is fucking great. Yes. The, this is the worst, worst part about this. I literally found the picture the other day. Uh I asked my girlfriend at the time to take a picture of the two of us. It is the blurriest photo in history. <laughs> but it still looks great. Oh, Come on. No, 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 it looks that. great. <laughs> I was just like you. I, Rob freaking walked by, and you didn't double check the focus. The f- <laughs> it happened too quickly. It happened too quickly. <laughs> that's like a layer of of like 
a real like a realism yeah but, like there's true. almost like a, it's no, like yeah, a, sure. an impression of like a real emotion that comes off of it where it's like this really encapsulates everything that you were feeling right. in that moment um, <laughs> but but my point my point more being and this is what i love about our industry is you never know who inspired who or what inspired oh, yeah. what or you know um and it, it's kind of it it it's my favorite part of it uh, the backstage part for us, but also the kind of cool unspoken part that everyone steals. Somebody's performance in this inspired you or made you want to be an actor and hopefully you inspired someone else. And it's like reaching through the tendrils of time and it's all connected, not to get all deep about it. You know, like I'm but sure it's true. there's some performance somewhere that you, Yuri, oh, saw yeah. that like you copied in a performance somewhere. Gosh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the way line i don't know i love it i love it no you're I mean, awesome and you're famous and you're cool and everyone should be happy to meet you yuri <laughs> exactly <laughs> thank you david exactly hey, Lily, I, I mean think, i think you said yeah. you had three things you were saving up but i think oh, you yes. only got to two of them do the third one. Oh, oh god uh, 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 wait what was the third one hold <laughs> on <laughs> because my thoughts are gone like oh, wait that. wait wait hey oh wrong one shoot oh, <laughs> oh there it is <laughs> It'll fade away. No, Sorry, it's, it's, a, it's not. It's, it's gonna not going to come. It's okay. But uh, but I, I I do have two, <laughs> two more. Things. All right, I can't turn it off. Okay, did, 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, and then one of the things is going to be Stargate Universe. I'm sorry, David, but I have to talk about it. Like, it's, it's fine. Go for it. It's it's my thing. But before that, I've heard of it. because we because we talked about ga Game of Thrones. Did I ever tell the the Charles dance story to you? Yuri? No. I haven't, heard, I haven't heard your Charles Dance story. It's a pretty great story. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's very bad. No, it's so a great story. That's no, no, it's not good. It's I, I worked at a pub in, in London, very famously. It's called the Victoria. It's a lovely pub. If you're ever there, it's at Paddington Station. Anyway, so I worked at a pub. And then this lovely gentleman. I won't go in. because you don't work there anymore. <laughs> oh, they, oh Fuck those shush. guys. Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> and then this lovely gentleman walks in. It's, it's, like, the, it's like noon or something like that. And I'm like, you know, they, they asked for uh, like a, a pint of beer and whatnot. And they, they went outside and I was like, huh, that man looked very familiar. I, I think that I oh, never mind, never mind. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing. And then he comes back like, I don't know, like 10 minutes later. And I'm the only sub because it's the morning shift. So I'm like, you know, I'm standing there and I'm like, you know, what can I help you with? And then he says, like, can I get a coffee and a tomato juice? And I'm like, sure, we are choice, but like, go off. I, I think you want to go to the bathroom or something. And then I, as, <laughs> as he was paying <laughs> and, and I looked up at him and I was like, I definitely know this guy. So basically he was like, like, do I wait for it or something? And I'm like, no, 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 I, I will, I will bring it to you. He's like, okay. Go to the to the coffee <laughs> quickly. Took out my phone. I was like Charles Dance, and then I just checked like like this like sideways. Like okay, it is Charles Dance. Oh Jesus Christ! So like immediately, my alien loving heart was like, <laughs> it's Charles Dance. Like oh my God! Like, I have to go off. And then I you know took out the, the tomato juice and the coffee, and I was like, excuse me, sir, can I ask you a question? And he was like, yeah, sure. Are you Charles Dance? And he goes, Yes, yeah, sometimes. Okay, you're not gonna believe this, but I have a huge Game of Thrones statue on my tie. I'm just gonna show it to you really quickly. And I pulled up my pants. <laughs> I showed him my Game of Thrones statue, and he was like, he was very nice. He was like, Oh, that's that's a lovely tattoo. Like, oh, it looks so detailed. What what a wonderful tattoo! And I was like, Right, Charles Dance, I'm showing you my tie. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so yeah, oh, that's yeah. beautiful. That's great. I, bless, oh, bless you. Yeah. For doing that. You have to be dead on the inside. I mean, sometimes it can be a little bit of a strange, like I'm trying to pee. But for the most part, get on the inside to not meet somebody who's like, I like your work and take it as a compliment. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. A cool thing. There's a time yeah. and a place for it if you're like. <laughs> Sure. You know. Don't bother pe don't bother people in restaurants if they're eating. Yeah. If you're if it's you're getting an MRI, world. don't be like, hey, by the way. <laughs> or if you're in the bathroom, because this happens at conventions sometimes, and somebody did it at the convention that that I was recently at. I ran to to the the closest bathroom from from my table, which was not the green room bathroom, because that you know takes six years to get to. Um, and. Um, somebody was just drying their hands from washing their hands and saw me come in and they're like, they're like, yo, Yuri or something. And I'm like, hey, what's up? Um, and then I went and I peed 
And then I came back and I was washing my hands and he was still standing right by the door. And I was oh, he's no. like, like and on, as man. I was going out, as I was going out, still in the men's bathroom, he's like, can I get a photo? I'm like, I'm sorry, man, I gotta go back to my table. Don't, you know, no, I, I will, oh. whenever possible, I will always make the time to do that. Yes. Not in the bathroom. Yeah. That, say, that said, uh, Julian Richings, who, a uh, Canadian actor, you would recognize him immediately. He was on Supernatural. He played Death on yes, Supernatural. Yes, oh, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God, yeah. yes. Yeah. But he's got a very distinct look. Mm. He's on my one of my favorite favorite all-time shows called Patriot on Amazon Prime, which you haven't seen. It's, it's glorious. But uh, because I love that show, he was a guest at a, at a show once, and uh, we got to to talking. He's very kind um, and very nice. Um, and and I said, near the end of the... He's got, you got to read the room a little bit. Like, don't ask them right off the top, you know, for, for something. But, but, you know, I felt like we had enough of rapport that I was like, hey, Julian, I've got an odd request. Could I get a photo with you in the men's bathroom at the urinals? Um, and I, and I referenced, a, there, there, there are a lot of scenes in Patriot shot with, with guys talking at, at the, at the urinal. That's true. And he's like, he's like, you know, that's, that's kind of cool. Let's do that. So, I mean, he came in and he did <laughs> That's the only, that's the only time you're allowed to do it is if it's Patriot related. Well, that's um, a, and you build a relationship a, first. There's a time and place, you know what I mean? Like, and I think yeah. convention can be tough because people going like, can I get a photo? It's not that you don't want to get them a photo. It's these people are in line for a photo. And I kind of feel like right. I'm, I, you, I'm, I feel like yeah. I'm being unfair, but I, I'm just going to say this as a PSA because this has happened so many times, especially since I lost weight. Um, always beware, be wary of talking crap. Hmm. Uh, especially at conventions, because I was at Dragon Con and, you know, especially when you're in the walk of fame, like you don't you have like five minutes to yourself. And I was starving. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'll be gone for 10 minutes. I'll be right back. And I ran to the bar near the walk of fame and just sat down to have like chicken fingers. And this person was sitting next to me and I don't ever wear my badge. Um, and they were just they're like, oh, you here at the con too? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, I got to sign the worst actor in the world. They're such an asshole. And I was like, oh, yeah. And they just started venting. Venting, oh, venting, no. venting, venting. Now, in their defense, the person they were working for apparently was a piece of crap. But at the same time, when they're like, who are you assigned to? I'm like, oh, I'm a guest. They're like, <laughs> oh, no. no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I would never have said anything, but like, beware. You know, everyone yeah. has a bad day. And also, you know, it's a very small world. And also, yeah. sometimes people are peeing, you know? Right. Exactly. You know, we're doing it's, number two. Um, yeah, you're going to exactly. You don't. You can't see him in the stall, right? Yeah, exactly. And I have an irrational fear at conventions that I'm gonna like look up <laughs> or down and see like a phone. Oh no! The stall. No, it's it's a weird it's a weird world. It really is. You just have to be aware of it. Is all. You know? That's very true. That's very true. You had a I second. I love him in supernatural, but I just saw him in something else too. Like Charles just. Gant? Yeah. No, no, no. Um, the dude from Play Death on Supernatural. What's his yeah. name? Oh, oh, Julian Richings. Um, yeah, I just saw him in yeah. something. Yeah, he's in he many things. Around, I'm googling yeah. him. Yeah, I was about to look it up <laughs> too. Kate, Kate is googling. I saw him in something. Do, 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 I remember he did like. Oh yeah, no, he was just in Percy Jackson. That was the last oh, thing that's I true. saw him. He yeah, was, that's he true. was um, uh, the um, he called him Krusty. He was the guy who who ran the yeah oh, yeah 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 yeah. Uh, yeah and then he gets true. trapped in the bed. It happens. It happens. I'm gonna have to watch it. Sagan is a Sagan is a huge Percy Jackson uh, fan, and we haven't started watching the show yet. But we'll have to watch it. <gasps> you should. You really should. It's it's wonderful good. to see Tim on it. I will say this, and this isn't crapping on the show at all. I don't know Percy Jackson. The my first introduction to it was the movie. Mm. Yes. And yeah. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed so it as well. Yeah. Same. The show is like a chopped up version of the movie so far because it's the same book. Oh. Like oh, watching you, it, yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, we did a review on it last week. It was last week, wasn't it? <laughs> last like, week, yeah. Is, is super, yeah, we did. We did a review on the on the first season. And our kind of general consensus is it's really good, but it's also way too quick. It's just yeah. like it just the pacing yeah. is weird. It like some of the episodes are really short. Um, but we're like, this has so much potential. <laughs> to be I'll amazing. tell you, as somebody trying to pitch TV shows and movies often, or at least attempting to. It's one of the things that makes me feel old and also out of touch because I like slow burns. Mm -hmm. Why I like yes. control, it's why I like Alan Wake too. It's why I like dark, uh, mm -hmm. breaking bad, mm -hmm. lost. You know, I like things that take a while that pay off. And you can blame 
TikTok culture, Instagram, mm -hmm. anything you want. There is a shorter attention span, and anybody oh, yeah. makes these shows and movies, they don't want to have the reveal be at the end of the season. They want it to be in the first act. Yeah. You know? Right. And, and yeah. It's, I don't like that. It's not yeah. as fun. Yeah. Anymore, you know? I just started watching um, The Terror a little while, uh, like a couple of weeks ago. Um, oh, uh which when you were talking about polar bears and stuff earlier that was i was like i'm yeah. just thinking you never told me you were watching terror i've started like... watching the terror i've watched four episodes of it so far i'm very very slow with it because i'm doing a bunch of other things at the moment but that is a, that is a slow it is a show. slow burn yeah. uh, but in like well. a good way it's like um yeah. it's it's just like you know they're trying to find their way through the north uh, pacific northwest passage i yes. can't speak um yeah. uh and uh you know they get frozen in place and then weird stuff start happening but it's all like it's really bizarre because it feels like like kind of nothing much happens in that first episode and then th the moments things start popping up it feels like the most dramatic thing in the world which is really impressive um especially because um because we were talking a bit about this last week in our percy jackson episode actually i'm finding a lot nowadays there is a huge issue with like flow in stuff even mm -hmm. in just in movies it's like people don't know how to pace anything anymore even the things that yeah. are longer they kind of tack more things onto the end of it it's like oh th th there's there's a there's a rhythm to these things that feels like it's kind of been lost which i find mm -hmm. you know sad and it, i i do wonder what has happened to our ability yeah. to make something that feels like it, it is a cohesive mm -hmm. There's a reason well. for it, sadly, not to get inside baseball about it. Like, it's a combination of a shorter attention span and they try to make things go faster. But one of the bigger reasons not to go, not to open this box, but one of the bigger reasons um, that people were fighting during the recent writer's strike to get rid of mini rooms yeah. was essentially that hiring a small group of people to quickly break a bunch of story and then yeah. run with it so they didn't have to pay them. Whereas you have the old days of not only releasing something once a week, so that way you have a week to think about what's going to happen next and talk at the water cooler about it, and have these big reveals, binging things, revealing everything at the same time and not hiring writers for the entire season so that you can actually break story has kind of contributed to this sort of mismatched, weird flow, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. But no, that's, what yeah. like that's, old, like, that's why I'm watching Korean movies now and TV shows. Because yeah. They are taking their time and I fucking love it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I will quickly ask, Yuri, did you watch Train to Busan? Yes, I finally did. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go on. I know. I mean, it was, it was, it was so great, but it was so sad. Um, I mean, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's. It really is. I mean, it you know, sad. and as, you know, as a father to a child, like, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's hard. I mean, he was, he was a terrible dad and I hope I'm slightly better, um, you know, but, uh, but. He tried at the end. <laughs> no, 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 of course, of course. Um, but it was, yeah, that was tough. And, um, but it was, but it, it's great. Like, it's Train great sounds movie. great. Yeah. Yes. It's so, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, okay. it, you know, I, it, it's so funny because I, I saw it recently. So I'm so glad that I did before, before we had this conversation. Like, no, I still haven't. I, seen I would it. have gone off if you haven't watched it. Yet. Like, yeah. Anyway, I give you another one for your list. It's called yeah. Midnight. Midnight. Uh, it's it's another Korean movie, uh, mm. and it's more of a thriller. And I watched okay. it because Mike Flanagan watched it, and Mike Flanagan mm. is fucking great. And well, yeah, Mike. Like, yeah, I'm I'm hit or miss with like. So I mean, I think Mike Flanagan is a genius. Yes. Sometimes I like stuff more than others of his. That's true. Um, but. But you know, Midnight Mass is fucking perfect. And ah, I love it. it. Do you not like um, uh, all the House of Usher? Um, I you know, I I did like it, but not as much as yeah. Midnight Mass. Like Midnight, Midnight Mass, Mass was, was like, like tight and it's beautiful. I mean, yeah, I mean it was basically for for me, Usher was like fan fiction for for succession. Oh. He was he was like, what if all the people in succession got exactly what they deserved in the most like giallo way possible like it's you know it's like it's like b-movie succession <laughs> like like uh like mm. i mean and it was great and I, I i always love watching his cast of you know um and it's worth watching for the lemonade speech for bruce davidson's <sighs> True. Uh, not bruce davidson, yes uh uh, uh greenwood. Bruce, bruce greenwood. greenwood greenwood um bruce greenwood's lemonade speech it's the best which i'm sure a million like if i was in college again and i had to do <laughs> monologues for like an audition stuff like that I would totally transcribe that. Well, you don't have to transcribe anymore. You just go online. But, but I would, I would, you know, transcribe, 
you know, monologues from like Joe versus the volcano and Reservoir Dogs and, you know, like stuff, you know, I'm like, what monologue you know. did you do from Joe versus the volcano? Oh, it's, it's, it's the one where he quits, uh, the, oh, the job the at the very beginning yeah, yeah. where he comes. Yeah. For us. Yes. That's exactly, that's exactly right. <laughs> okay. Um, amazing. Oh my uh, God. I never thought of Joe versus the volcano for monologue. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's John Patrick Shanley, uh, you know, a, a master. I mean, you know, so yeah. John Patrick Shanley wrote that. So, so, but, but yeah, but like, it's, it's worth watching for the, the lemonade, <laughs> the speech oh, yeah. alone is worth watching, but that, and, um, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Who, who, uh, only gets more beautiful, uh, as the years go by, uh, uh, uh oh, Carla. Carla. Carla Gugino. Yeah. 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 True. Um, oh my God. You know, just, yeah, just cast her and everything, but, yeah. um, yeah, funny because I know, ran Flint... Michael uh, Truco on the strike lines, and we were talking about because it was just starting to air. And you know, we all know Mike and the crew mostly. You know, I, I know Kate and and Samantha and all them, but I've yeah. never been in any of those projects, and I would love to. And Michael sure. was talking about it in such a really great way. He's like, I am extremely lucky to have been recruited into this. Uh, what did he call it? Repertory Rep theater company. Yeah. And he's like, it's amazing. He's like, they call me and they're like, clear your schedule. And he's like, absolutely. Whatever the role is, count me in. And I kind of, I'm very jealous of it. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I'm also, I mean, I wish we had more of those. You know, it, we yeah. really have mm. pockets of that. You have the James Gunn world. You have the Judd Apatow doesn't really do it as much anymore. And then the mm. Mike Flanagan ones. We need more people yeah. like that who are just... Mm. Yeah. Reusing cool groups of I'll, actors. I'll, I'll go I'll go back to Stephen Conrad, who's the showrunner on Patriot and on uh Perpetual Grace Limited. Um, like he he does like if you go from Patriot, if watch watch the watch the pilot. If you like it, you're gonna like it. If you don't like it, pass. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Um, I feel yeah, like it's... I saw the trailer for this a while but, ago and thought it looked really interesting. But, but he, he basically he, all these people are telling me to watch the show and I haven't watched it yet. But, yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like a rep company. You know, I, I got to hang with Rahul Kohli for a little bit once and, um, he talked, he talks exactly the same way. You know, he's, he's like, I love being part of that company. I'll, you know, I'll, whenever he calls, I'll say yes, of course. I text um, them every time. I mean, when I watch the show at this point, you know, I, I agree. Midnight mass was beautiful. Um, I've been trying to get everyone I know to watch it. And I, I enjoyed the fall of the house of usher. It, to me, it felt like a, a Poe fan film. It was yes. like, yeah, yeah, but because yeah. it is. I immediately yeah. texted Kate and Samantha, and I was like, "Your performance is fantastic." Mm -hmm. I'm watching mm -hmm. it like going over their acting more than the show yeah. itself. You know, yeah. and that that's the part yeah. that I think is amazing. You just get a chance to play. You know, yeah. Exactly. We need to start making our own. Yuri is what I'm saying. Right. Yes. <laughs> I can come and die. <laughs> right. We know exactly who to call. Yes. Dead ass Lily. Yes. Wait a minute. There is that one scene where an ass gets. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was me. You never know. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to talk about Stargate Universe now for a little bit because I'm dying Bring inside. It. Yeah. But it's just a tiny bit. I'm. It's literally really just like you know. I I fucking love that show. It's like it it i'm gonna be the same as the convention people it did save me i was through a really bad time and it came along the right time and it's i said it a million times on this podcast everywhere that it's my favorite tv show like ever and uh i am fucking heartbroken that we we didn't get more because i wanted more and i will it's it's literally just gonna be me praising david from now on so like you know fo we're gonna focus on david because david is fucking right. great okay, you guys <laughs> come basically it's just two tiny stories it's like i always love your performance and then i found you on facebook and i literally was like look david i have a destiny tattoo because i fucking love the show and you were like oh that is really cool and i was like I love you. <laughs> like that, that's, 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 that's done. <laughs> it's that was like, so easy. Yeah, it's so easy. And it's it, it's been going ever since. And, and you always answer. Always. Like, I don't think I ever left a comment where you didn't answer. And you Aww. did say uh, I did a nice job for, you know, the drawing with, with Yuri, the, the Spider-Man drawing. So I was like, you know, <laughs> dying. But um, anyway, the, the other thing I will uh, uh, say and mostly ask is like, you know, it's it's an open ending, mm -hmm. obviously. How would you have finished it? I will answer it. You're going to be upset. 
So, so <laughs> maybe I, not. So me, I, I'll, I'll, I'm going to condense it because I have said this before, and I don't want anyone to be like, here it goes with this anecdote again. The thing is, we didn't know we were going to be canceled. Um, so we were filming season two. I remember I was in the gate room filming some scene. And I, we were all fans of the show as well. We loved the job, but also anytime we got a new script, we would disappear around a corner and be like, what happens? What happens? Like we enjoyed it. And so being the nerd that I am, I always wanted to know what was happening next. I remember one day when we were filming one of the last few episodes of season two, I went up to Brad Wright and I said like, Hey, what's happening next season? And he told me a bunch of stuff. Um, and then we got canceled. <laughs> so I, I, I just claim this. I will never say, because number one, it's not my story to tell. I would never break that trust. And because it's really cool stuff. And if I tell it, then it's spoiled and maybe they'll never make it someday. And so I won't repeat it. However, I do know what happens in season three. I know how the show mostly ends um, beyond season three. Um, I know what the feature plots were potentially going to be once we were canceled, the, the vague broad, broad strokes. I know a lot of people who have speculated online about stuff are completely full of shit. Um, and they're making crap. Anytime they're like, this is what would have happened. I'm like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> uh, and I'll say this, and I'll say this because I've met them and they're very nice. People always love to, I don't know what this gotcha thing is that people love to do. They're like, did you read the comics? Because they wrapped it up. I wish them the best and they're so cool and they're nice people, but that's not canon. Because Brad and Rob and Carl and Joe were not involved. Um, it's very cool. And if you like the comics and you like the stories and you like to write your own fan fiction and stuff, go for it. I mean, more power to you. But I know what was gonna happen. Some of it, not all of it, some of it. And it was really cool. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and, and I would love for that. I mean, any one of us, if they ever said like, hey, you got, first of all, we're actors, we love working. But uh, if they ever said like, hey, we're going to carve out some time to do this, would you? I think all of us would say yes. And That's I'm going to address something I've never addressed before. <gasps> I don't me. usually, well, I don't like, I never, I don't know, Yuri, if you feel the same way. I do love interacting with fans and people who like our work. But also you have to be careful, especially if you're in any way sensitive, because sometimes people are jerks on the internet. Yeah. You have to kind of protect your nerdy little heart. Um, so recently I went to the gym and somebody on some social media was like, did you see this video that they made about what would have happened in Stargate universe? And I was like, okay, we go. Uh, <laughs> but I was at the gym and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to hit play on this video because somebody said, and what they said about you. And I was like, mm? so I hit play on the video, put it in my pocket and went to work out just listening to it. And it was like, a, it's, it had a lot of views. Um, the reason I'm bringing it up is because it had a lot of views. And it was a lot of speculation, some of which, you know, Joe Malazzi had said some stuff, which, God bless him, great guy. But he was like saying ideas they had in the writer's room, which is just pitches. That doesn't mean what they were going to do. But some mm -hmm. of them were close. Some of them were so not what was going to happen. But then there was one thing that legit messed up my month. Uh, somebody in the video was like, and they couldn't continue to do it because David Blue is notoriously difficult. And I was like at the gym, I'm like, huh? And I freaked out. I started like texting. I texted Lexa Doig. I texted Michael Shanks. And I was like, first of all, is there a rumor about me? Like, did I, is anyone mad at me? Like, ah, it was like the worst thing as an actor to hear. And every one of them was like, what are you talking about, dude? No, not at all. And I was like, well, half of this video was full of weird speculation. A couple of things, they were not far off of some basic ideas. You know, like the they had pitched the idea that that Gin gets downloaded into Chloe's body kind of thing. I'd heard that before. Mm. Uh, but like that the whole project was on a hitch because of me. And I was like, what did I do? And it really messed me up until a friend was like, it's the internet, man. Like, let it go. Right. Yeah. Press it because I think there's a wonderful world of speculation. And it's one of my favorite things. Like, what would have happened? I, I read all the Star Trek The Next mm. Generation books, Vendetta, Metamorphosis, you know, the Star Wars Jedi Academy books. I love that stuff, whether it's considered canon or not. But there's a there's a danger 
in speculation. There's a danger in rumor. And I do think, you know, I think there's also a, we, 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 uh, not to go down the dark road, but we kind of addressed this when we premiered. There's people would say like, you're ruining Stargate. And you're like, it's Brad and Rob. They created SG one, the show you love and you're mad at them. Now there's this weird sense of ownership mm. in the mm -hmm. nerd world. And I, I, I will die on this hill. I think we need to let go of it, whether it be Star Wars, Star Trek, Stargate, so Lord good. of the Rings, The Hobbit, whatever. There is this like, it's not my Star Trek or, you know, this is what you should have done. Well, you're not in the writer's room and things mm -hmm. change. And there's different stories, you know, like, uh, I don't like the way that Peter Parker says this in Spider-Man <laughs> video game. And you're like, well, this is how this Peter Parker says it. You know what I mean? So exactly. there are plenty more. Yeah. It, it like messed up my day until I realized I was yeah. like, this is some speculative stuff. And even if it were true, I don't, I, Yuri's known me for a while. I hope it's not true. Um, it's not, I, I wouldn't uh, have asked, I wouldn't have asked you to be on Orbital Redux if it were true. I, I would hope not. <laughs> yeah. um, but I'm, I love, and, and this is where I've gotten in trouble before. I was a huge Stargate fan before being cast and I loved our show. I wouldn't have done it if it was the same thing. It was different and it, it, it explored new ideas and the cast was amazing. The writers were amazing. The crew was amazing. I had so much fun. So we all wanted to do more. Mm -hmm. When we said goodbye at the end of season two, we were all so excited to come back again. And that's why it was so disappointing and heartbreaking when we found out we weren't coming back. And then we thought we might be coming back for a movie and then that didn't happen. Um, and that's also why I would never say the stuff that I know. I don't know everything because it's cool and I would love for it to happen someday. And even if not, it's not my story to tell. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to be known as difficult for telling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, straight up, fuck those guys. <laughs> right? right? Yeah. I, yeah. But it's cool. Like, I, I, it's, I, it's cool. It's, it, it, yeah. They were going in really cool places with it. And especially, you know, this part has already come out. Like when we were canceled, they were going to do a movie, two movies. The yes. first one would have been SG-1 Atlantis and Universe all in one feature. Yeah. And then the second one would have wrapped up Universe. We were all excited about that. I'm friends with Ben Browder. He wanted to come play with us so bad. Mm. All of us wanted to work with each other more. Lou Diamond Phillips wanted to be a series regular on the show. Like we all loved it. So like it would have been cool. It's fucking great. <laughs> I mean, look. I've since changed my tune, but as a Star Trek fan, Next Gen was my jam. Mm. And I like Deep Space Nine, but I love Next Gen. And Voyager wasn't really for me, and I didn't watch Enterprise. And then during the pandemic, I went back and rewatched them all, and I now I like Voyager. I like Deep Space Nine more. I really enjoyed Enterprise for what it was. And what I needed was the distance from my favorite to realize why different doesn't mean bad. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I think a lot of... And I've said this before, but I think a lot of Stargate fans need to, if they haven't already learned that lesson, SG-1 was one thing, Atlantis was another, the original movie was another, Universe is another, and I think they're all quality in different ways. I loved our show, and I, I defy anybody who didn't to actually watch it, because most mm. of them who mm. are, have the vitriol were like, no. I hate it, I didn't watch one episode. <laughs> like, yeah. Right, great, yeah, can, yeah, you, you can decide on that, opinion. sure. Yeah, I, I I hate to be uh, difficult to work with, but um, I have to get going. Yeah, um, <laughs> like I was gonna, I, I was gonna be like, I'm sorry, we talked but, a lot. Did we even do what we were supposed to do? Hey, you uh, did exactly what you were supposed to do, which I'm, was just I mean, come I'm, and chat with us, which yeah. is perfect. And it makes me very happy. But I have to say my dad joke before you go, Yuri. <laughs> of course, I, I know the deal. <clears throat> my friend said, "What starts with G, and I, and ends with B." And I said, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's good. Thank you. So she's, she's always got to end with a dad joke. Yeah. Can I compete uh, with one? Oh, yes. Please. Yeah. please. What do a pig and a fish have in common? Well, they both have gills, except for the pig. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that that's that that's a multi-layer. It's like multi-stage. 
It's like a rocket. It's like a multi-stage rocket that deploys <laughs> as you go on. I don't know what it is because I don't have children, but the older I get, the more I enjoy I... watching people go. <sighs> I love yeah, it. Yeah. It's the best because Katie is always like, oh, here we go again. And I'm like, yes, here we go again. Anyway, what's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good. Good. It hurts so good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're gonna let you go, Yuri. We're not gonna keep you up, and and thank you for you know, getting us all together. Of course, and of course. Uh, you know, making my Stargate universe loving heart <laughs> so happy right now. Thank you guys for having me. I feel bad because yes. I feel like I, I went off on too many tangents and I took. No, 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 no. Okay. honestly, it was a really fascinating conversation, and I love talking to anybody about Alan Wake too. So that was a really huge plus. There Amazing. you go. <laughs> now, now that's that that's my homework is to make sure I've played Alan Wake two before. Yes. <laughs> Same I time. will warn you, it is, it's a wonderful game. It will make you feel like it's it's doing drugs, the video game. It's, the it's best. so weird. I love it so Great. much. <laughs> Fun. Great. We have to do this Hey, Yuri, we have to talk message. not through, uh, through internet things. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> oh, man. But yes, gonna happen. obviously you both have to come back uh, and yes. we'll talk about like part two stuff that you, you've been watching and we can I, 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 warned, yeah, stuff. I warned I warned David David that this is a deep hole. This show is a it deep is. hole. Yeah. Uh, He's been here for like it. four times at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, something like that. I mean no, I feel like I owe you guys because we didn't talk about like anything. But uh, I, no, I would absolutely did. love to come back sometime. Let me know. Please Great. do. Let's do it. Yes. All, All right. All right. This is us for today and you know, don't forget to watch movies because that's what we like to do. Movies here. are awesome. Yeah. Love you all. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.